Our speaker is Reverend uh, Dr. Samuel Kisiedu uh, or Professor Kisiedu. Uh, like as we shared, biology professor. Uh, he's also an international evangelist and a relationship and marriage counselor, and has also authored a, a number of books, a number of good uh, books, and a well-traveled man and a very busy man. But uh, God has graced us to have him today. All right. So uh, from now till about seven o'clock, uh, Dr. Kisiodu will be talking. And after that, we'll have some few questions. Uh, you recall we've amended our time from seven uh, to uh, 730 uh, by popular call from the service and all the things we've done. We've amended our time. So we'll be closing at 730. All right. Uh, so. Uh, Reverend Professor, uh, over to you, and you are welcome, and God bless you. Yo, thank you, sir. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for this time together. Thank you for this time together. The Lord is my refuge and a present help in trouble and pain. Be still and know. Be still and know, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know, be still and know, be still and know that I am God. God, what is thank you. Patience is not doing nothing. Patience is to patience as we wait. The engine of faith. So come and teach us and write your words in our hearts when I sin against you for Christ's sake. Amen. Challenging so much. Uh, maybe on Monday I'll go into more specifics. But I was thinking of how do I present it? I have a book actually, Challenges of Men and Women in Relationships, which run out a long time. Um I don't even have a copy with me here. So I was sitting and thinking and thinking, and I found that, well, the reason why we were made, one major reason, was fellowship with a woman. You see, fellowship is fellows on one ship. Fellowship, we sink together, we float together. Fellowship. Because in Genesis 2.18, God said the man shouldn't be alone. And I will transfer it to the woman anyway. Because you have left the boat, the ship, and fly. Fellowship, fellows on one ship. Now God instituted that fellowship when we were sinless. So marriage was established in a sinless state of man. But parenting started in the sinful state of man. That's a huge difference. Marriage, fellowship, instituted in the sinless state of man, but parenting started in the sinful state of man. Genesis 4, verse 1 and 2. We have obtained a child with the help of the Lord. He is still Lord, even if you lost your paradise. You see, in the idea of fear, the first negative emotion, which is a challenge for men, is the idea of fear. We think women are afraid, they are afraid. Men fear to be vulnerable. It's one of our major problems. We don't want people to know our weaknesses and our problems. We prefer to keep quiet until it blows out, until we get rotten with it. Now, when you crowd too many things in your mind, it destroys creativity. That is one serious issue for men. Because we won't open up. That has nothing to do with the culture. That has nothing to do with the economy. It has nothing to do with the woman or anybody. It's a character we have because of pride. You see, we don't want us to become vulnerable. We don't want people to know what is going on. And it is a big, big, big problem. You see, we are the products of communication. Do you know that? Let there be light. And light came. God created light. He created himself first. Then he created us. 
into the light. Everything else came from words. So the man had the mouth to speak. Supposed to be the leader in communication. And if he wouldn't do it, the fellowship machine cannot run. The fellowship machine cannot run. So I was thinking and thinking and thinking, and I started for us to be different types of ship. Ship. I am in Yamina, I see so many. But the ship of life. When the woman gave food to Adam, she lost her submission. Because the devil knew he couldn't beat Adam. So he waited to attack the woman. And the woman was given to the man when the man was perfect. Even when we're perfect, you needed a woman. Are we aware of that? How much more now? Women understand it. Any women on board understand it. Parents, make your daughters understand that. We need them to function. Even when we're perfect, we needed a woman. How much more now? So train the child that one day he's going to help somebody. The spoon for tea, not a spoon for coffee, or the spoon for porridge, or akasa, or whatever. It's not the spoon for bangkok, and it's not the same spoon you use for soup. There are different types of spoon, lengths, sizes. So depending on what you're going to stir and help, you develop your spoon. And each spoon is important. That's parenting. But because parenting started in a simple state of man, for Adam and the wife Eve, supposed to help him, and he listened to the devil, and therefore sin came in. We didn't know how to parent when we were sinless. So the generation continued like that. And a lot of the problems all of us have, including the challenges of men, which you can't solve, the result of bad parenting, or parenting, you're doing your best, but so many things are absent, because your parents didn't teach you. Now, when the man made a bigger mistake and took the food, he lost his leadership. They taught Cain and Abel to worship. They did it so well when they were worshiping, the parents were not there. And the first thought of murder was in church. We still do it with our phone calls and attitudes and things. And the first time man had a brother, he killed him. There was no sister. The first time man had a brother, supposed to be another leader, he killed him. We are killers. So the whole of Christianity to restore the leader of men and the submission of women who are submitted to the men. From killing each other. And I don't know when. Now, Psalm 11, verse 3 says, when the foundations are destroyed, so we don't get these foundations and help the women to help the men to submit to God. We come into the marriage, supposed to help us deal with our challenges. And we are just expecting expectation, expectation, expectation. So counselors and ministers should teach them that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So marriage is bringing two temples together. Temple is worship. That is what the double-double is. Forgiveness, love, understanding is supposed to double. Now, you can't just separate marriage, which I used to do from the other parts of the Bible. Where you say, oh, yeah, yeah, husband, wife. Every brother 
you see refers to your husband. Every sister you see in the Bible refers to your, your wife. The person is a brother and sister before becoming a husband and wife. Otherwise, it can't even be. So we must get the foundation of our Christianity right. So because that thing happened, and a man lost his leadership by taking the food from Eve, God wants to restore that leadership in Christ. And we are struggling to do it without him. So the first ship is leadership. The first ship to sit in on the waters of life, including marriage, courtship, church, secular work, school, ministry, has been in marriage is the America. Now, the man leadership is his leadership. Because when you are talking of challenge, you are talking in terms of relationship with people. If you are alone on some island and you can't watch your mouth, you may not even say, Aaron. The word challenge, the battles will fight. About when we solve that, those areas, the rest will come easy for us. Leadership, crisis. It's the woman wants man leading her with a purpose to a place. But you want the woman to follow you. Going well. Follow you, John, 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 like John, where? Purpose. I was in a church last week, and I met men, women, you know, all these interactions and things. And one thing the woman said is that some of their husbands have no purpose. They live by circumstances, not principle. You see, they have to direct the women. You see, if you are the head, one of your huge challenges is you have brains to think. Number one. Eyes to see for the family, to see where God is leading. Number three. Nose to smell trouble, not just perfume and nice food. Number four. Mouth to speak for the family. Not for the Lord. Mouth. And number five. Ears to hear God for your leadership. Those five things brain, eye, nose, and your mouth and your ears must all be in play from the cradle to the grave. You okay, develop it okay. and you marry. So women help the men to see, to hear, to think. And the question has become a big challenge because they don't understand women. There are people you have counseled, and then they sit after first session, second session, after all, they realize they don't really have problems. Is that they have misunderstood each other's role and makeup. What are you supposed to do in my life? And who are you? So leadership, when that is in place, you said what you shouldn't say, you are quiet, you didn't give me details, your mouth is in trouble as a role. The leadership role. Did you see? Did you see I was trying to open the thing? You helped me, and then you were rushing off to go and do your seminar. You saw it. That the, the, the child was this. You were waiting for me to come. I should leave the kitchen. I come and do it. You are just sitting down. Because the brain which controls the rest of the body is not functioning properly. God knows why he gave us the mind of Christ in 1 Corinthians 2.16. That mind of Christ is in Philippians 3 or Philippians chapter 2 5 to 8. Have this mind Philippians 2 5. Take it. It's in a package given to you. Christian. Look there. That man is activated by the word of God each day. Like I tell people, I became a Christian 54 years ago. 
I talk about the NB, NB. No Bible, no breakfast. There is not one day I haven't read Bible for 54 years. We married for 21 years. August 28. There's not one day we haven't read Bible together as a husband within 24 hours. There's corporate anointing, which is group anointing, which started with Adam and Eve in Genesis 8 to 10. When God was coming to them in the cool of the day. Create a cool of the day. What is that? No cooking for Eve, no farming for Adam, nothing. Create that quiet atmosphere. You stop everything. Board meeting, radio program, TV program for what? With that Bible? I'm going to preach. I'm going to do this. And you go with that weak spirit and lack of God's presence properly, and you go and do it. And you do it so much that your cutting edge is blunt, but you are used to it. What you feed grows. What you starve will die. And the woman's supposed to come and help me to ensure that we are aware of God's people in the marriage. Do so, do so until it becomes free. And then they say, hey, well, we used to pray together. Well, we used to. And then when I say, he said, you pray. And the man too, when it comes to the prayer, I say, stop mix. The devotion was a, was a church service. They say, let's, let's pray. They say, you pray. You are, you, you, you are the priest. You call them my wife. Oh, she, she prays, she wouldn't pray. You have a challenge of knowing how to bring your partner, the one supposed to help you, touch your vision of scripture and things for you to move along. It's a challenge you are not solving. It's a battle you are not fighting. And you are complaining rather. Because that, what you call devotion, was a church service. We are left with announcements, closing prayer, offering. All you do is just preaching, making your wife a congregation. And I, I, if you are like that, you are stopping that. Because the word of God made us. We are product of words. And Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Tongue has power. Death or life. Then verse 22, very strange. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. No, he who finds a woman. No, 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 no. See what the Bible said? Proverbs 18, 22. Things that qualities that convert a woman to a wife. And qualities converting a wife to a mother. How many children doesn't make you a complete mother? The same with daddy. There's a biological one. But it's the real quality God-ordained fatherhood. You see? So what I'm saying is that the leadership of men, they are as they are, yes, see, understand, and speak, and do this, they are not employing that. It's not boss. Or you take most of the decisions or all the decisions. It's not boss. It's two words. Privilege, responsibility. Privilege, responsibility. You see, leadership. You see, leading me to work. So when you meet, discuss, have a plan. I have about 23, 24 things. I'm not talking about them now. Of things, let me mention them very quickly. If any counselor in any church, anywhere, doesn't go through all these, in your counselor, you don't incorporate, you are giving them problems. Number one, companionship. Number two, communication. Time, I'm not going to go through them. Number three, love. Number four, affection. Number five, intimacy. Not just sex. Closeness. And that's how you find the differences and the needs to be close. That's number five. Number six is sex. Number seven is romance, attitude towards a lover. Number eight is career and education. Number nine is managing finances together, joint, okay, financial management. Number 10 is childbirth and parenting. Number 11 is in-laws. Don't let them become outlaws. By the law, they are in. In-law. By the law, they are in. And we look at Exodus 18, 8 to 10. Exodus 18, 8 to 10. Moses told the father-in-law all that God has done. And Jethro rejoiced in all that God has done. In-laws should see all that God 
is doing and has done in your lives. It's number one. Number 12, friendships and associations plus your social life. Number 13, health. Maintaining good health, balance, to exercise, eating well, and all the rest of them. Plus health challenges, hospital checkups. Number 14, domestic duties and activities. That's what the cleaning, the purchases of what is needed in the living room and the kitchen and all that. There was a wife and a husband fighting over light. The man says, if you open the curtains, people see inside the room. Oh, I want some light. I want to that home and the woman was complaining. Look, you see, you can't have light in. He says, when I open, people see inside the house. That became a big thing. Because they didn't discuss some of these things in the culture. Number 15 is culture. Culture is a set of values defining a person. But I sometimes want to define culture as what you are taught in your house. Well, it may have come from Japan. They can quarantine you. That make you get in touch with anybody. So the language, the food, the clothing, some of the major things defining you, you will not be doing them. To me, culture is what you are taught in your house. That is why people come for altar call Sunday after Sunday. Wonderful. But the people, the people in the room already, and it take one year, two years, where are the people going? Do they connect with them and love them and help them? Number 16 is your spirituality, your faith, your general Christian life and all the rest of them. Number 17, how to resolve conflicts. It's impossible for two people to be together without disagreements. We know Luke 17, verse 1. Advances will come, but make sure they are not from you. Resolving conflicts. Number 18, how to handle crisis. You lose your job, this happened, suddenly you get COVID, and you're afraid you're going to die. And you pronounce it. The devil is walking around, his money is so business in the Middle East. And he hears you say, hey, Kofi, hey, this is, so are you going to get another job? This kind of thing. They say, when you do it, few people pass the exam. So let's go and help you. You invite the enemy. And when God is disciplining you, you don't want it. See, when God puts a fence around you, it's not to keep you in uncomfortably, it's to keep the enemy out. You see? Number 19, entertainment. Oh, this is for no Enough? No. Challenge. Number 20 is background. Hey, it's a big word. A big word. The way he eats, the way he dances. There's a brother, a friend who was in school, and he never closes the bottoms here. You see the shirt bottoms? The first two, first three. From secondary school to university to United States, when I went to his house, he was still not closing those bottoms. All habits die out. You see, and the men are challenged by the way they handle their wife is not a girlfriend, it's a wife. My mother, my mother, that's not your mother, that's your wife. Because the woman too is doing it. My dad, my dad, that's your husband. Background. Who trained him? How they do funerals? Baby dedication, the dedications? What their beliefs are? A whole lot. Number 21, differences between men and women. Ah, yeah, if you don't teach that one in counseling, you have not helped them. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Number 22, needs. That one is something here I'll read very quickly. Needs. Why do you divorce? Why are you separating? Why do you even want to marry? My need men. Cook for me, have baby for me, want to make love and do this. Needs, emotional needs, sexual needs, romantic needs. 
academic needs, needs, needs. Number 23, expectations. Ha <laughs> ha. What are you expecting? And then you get disappointed because you give your, your kind of expectation. Talk about them and get them sanctified. You see, when ideas come, Tell them to God in prayer. Some of them you don't have to do alone. Do with your partner. Then God will cut away all the unwanted branches. And then you have what you call a vision. Dream means God can do. Vision means God will do. Many dreams not fulfilled, they didn't become vision. A vision is sharp. Now the test of your vision is how soon you give it up. And marriage is ministry. And I think it's the first account in heaven. Because Hezekiah was going to die. God didn't ask him to preach to the nation, set your house in order. So when they're going to die, God is concerned about love, forgiveness, understanding, living a legacy. Legacy is not just what you L-E-A-V-E -E, live. It's what you L-I-V-E, -E, what you live. Because of that, you live. It's what you live, what you lived. So you left money, you left this, but you leave values and principles, manners, courtesy, honesty, integrity, faithfulness, diligence, huge legacy. And because you didn't pray as a challenge, you don't want your wife to get to know you want to be a hero even when you die. The house daddy gave us, the house daddy did this, the house, yeah, 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 and I did this, and did this. So the corporate anointing was lacking on that building, that land. That car, that money. Because the prayers you pray with your wife, you didn't do it. You want to be a hero, or you're, you didn't see your dad doing it. So you're not even aware you are not right. So when you leave it, the anointing is about 60%. Then about six, seven years later, so much trouble about the heart, and they sell it. Sometimes they even demolish it, a development. I saw one in Kumasi, very big, nice yellow house. Ah, that one day I saw people breaking it down. I said, What? He said, The man and the wife. All the children are in Canada, UK, US, and places. Ghana. So the man died. They came to bury him. I think the mother was gone. And none of them want to be responsible. You, you are in UK. I have the one to paint it, do this. So they decided to sell the building and share the money. A developer came for it, broke it down for development. I said, This man thought he left a house. The house where these children were born went to elementary school, went to this school, and this, I've left the house for them, maintaining it, nice big house is gone. I said, come and see. But under what condition did you train your children and make them understand? You see, expectations, according to your fantasies, and these days, friendships, they themselves, did they know God's will for them? So of us, your marriages and your relationships, even your church involvement is being run by friends. Oh, my brother, my sister. Finally, 24, your role. One role of a father is to help the children to love their mother. And one role of a mother is to help the children to respect their father. Four stages. Stage one is honeymoon and the first few months. That's the whole message here. I'm not going to go into it. When you have no children. Stage two, when you have a lot of free time and the rest of them. Stage two is when there are pregnancies and little children. Stage three is years into the marriage where you got your mid-year crisis. So you just take away your gun. You can't fire properly. Some have diabetes. They don't take their medicine. They say they are praying. And they're using primary school prayers for university problems. You better stop. Some don't like medicine. They don't eat. Contemporary pepper and things. Pepper comes. It's medicine. Plantain is medicine. It's medicine. Food. So if you say food, medicine is not good, then food, don't eat. We have not understood some things. Even as I was asked to put fix on the boil, 
to be healed, okay? Stage four is when you have an empty nest. And there are things to be done in all these four stages. This photo, for those who are married, and if you are going to marry, your challenges will come when these four stages, you don't manage them. And the mistakes in stage one, stage one, for example, is when you have a lot of freedom. Number two, you have a lot of time. You have freedom and time. Number three, reality set in. Prepare to face them honestly and purposefully. With an aim of change and getting a purpose, don't just let's talk this. I'll do this. Then they hire you, go and say they won't come home on time. If he's talking the way he's talking, the wife is talking, I don't like it. That's how she was giving to you. Let us not behave like one area is so bad and distasteful to you that all the other good things the wife is doing or husband is doing, zero. And don't use a bad behavior to justify your bad behavior. So when you're talking to me, I say, what about you? What about you? What about you? You see, it's a challenge. And we bring it to church. How you are in church is how you are at home. The same principles for church. The same principles for marriage and relationships. Same for church because it goes through seasons, hot, cold, dry, wet, and you are just an adapt. You are just an adapt. You are just an adjustment. It's not easy. Now only the two of us are there, emptiness. My wife said, let's sit and talk. That's the role of a woman. When we're in Scotland, you used to do dishes. And the children grow, and then the children are doing it here and there. So we sat and talked as to whose role, especially kitchen matters. So I said, please go back to your washing of dishes. So I agreed. I'll cook. Where well, you have to keep it here and there. Sometimes I'm so tired. Hey, you can always say, get your or whatever it is ready, and you help here and there. And we agree. What is happening and why you are challenged is that you are making time for work, board meetings, trips to Middle East and Dubai and to conferences, committee meetings. You have married ministry and married your work and go computer and accolades and radio and TV programs more than your wife. It's a huge challenge for you. You see, you marry, you fall in love with a personality. Only neighbor does any, you fall in love with the personality, but you live with the character. When it's your biology, now character is who you are when no one is watching you. Who are you tonight? And character is tested, trained, turned left and right, and there's a syllabus for character. And you're not allowed God. Break me, mold me, make me, feel me, pray, spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me, reasons. break me, and God hold the hand, and God stops. And God says, because you can't hear, and there's someone hold the hand, why should God break? He holds your leg. You see, so man, a challenge you have is sitting down in your leadership with your wife and children, plan things for the family. We don't say, stop whatever you are doing. If you are going to lead prayer, you are traveling. Here am I sitting here. Stop all of them and always be involved in cleaning. Lead it. Discuss it. Discuss with your wife. We used to have family meeting once a month. And a family meeting is not devotion. Once a month. You ask them some of these things, where do I get them from? Ideas for action come out of willingness to obey. There are times when I don't know, my wife has a link. She was listening. She will call me and <laughs> I would never go to pray with me and all that. My wife was like, where did you learn this from? I said, I came to my mind and I think God is directing and it works. Be creative. And the woman to the same soup for 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, 10 years. Same thing. I see the crab walking here. The snail is going slowly here. And, and the shrimp is like this. And then and the dry fish, the same soup. soup they have bread. Boys are bread. Turn this round. Be creative. You come to help the man. 
The same happens when you are in school. You have brought them into the marriage. So men have a big challenge of sitting down with the family. And a family meeting will talk about school, work, cleanliness, and all that. Then we form a circle. And you stand in the middle. What do you want us to pray about? Then we all lay hands on you. The next. Yeah, I'm going, uh, I'm going to Ghana. I'll have a program with Gabriel Baptist. This is not a bit really. I'm not saying copy it, but things you will do. And what you call challenges are lessened because it's rather what you are not doing is your problem. And the empty spaces are filled by the enemy. You know what God told Adam, what are you? He, he, he knew the location. You know what it meant? What are you as a leader? But I had a book on spiritual warfare is run out. What did you do or didn't do for the devil to go and do what he did? Because you don't ask God according to James 1, 5 to 8. James 1, 5 to 8. If you lack wisdom, what to do? When you meet a difficulty? Knowledge is getting the facts. Wisdom is how to use the facts. Understanding is interpreting results according to the facts. And when you interpret them right, why am I a woman? Why am I a man? Why did I marry him? Why is it high? My nose? My color? And why did this come so quickly? Why is it de delaying? Then you get more knowledge. So you, then you say you apply more wisdom. Wisdom is application of truth to experience. Wisdom is how to solve problems. Wisdom is seeing things the way God sees them. And the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. When you fear him through his word, you see. Because the woman is supposed to submit in, in Ephesians 5.22. It's preceded by Ephesians 5.21. You see, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ, the fear of God through Bible. So courtship, one of the things that should concern every woman. Tell your daughters, is he a Bible person? I don't care if he's a bishop, apostle, archbishop, somebody in London. All the titles are going, call himself the presidium president of the organization. Say, hey, the titles are finished. Presidium president. What is presidium president? All right, 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 right. Left, 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 reverend. Does this man take the Bible to read and apply it every day? It's what should concern you. Because heaven and earth shall pass. Uh -huh. Not the word. Are you challenged? Are you fighting? Either you are using a stick or something, not using the sword of the spirit. All your sword is blunt. How do you use scripture to control your thoughts and control your temper? You have a bad temper? How do you correct your wife? How do you correct the children? Because there are two kinds of criticisms. Constructive criticism, it's only said we should not drink water, what to drink. Destructive criticism, it's only said don't drink water, nothing. If you feel challenged because your wife is not what she should be, or your in-law, or your son, or your daughter, and at workplace, a colleague, your boss, your employee, a business partner, anybody, Ask God what to do. Even if you know what to do, prayer makes it more powerful. The results become more lasting. I want to show you how. Even if you're not too sure, once you've prayed and respected God, expect power to go with it. And aim at change. When I ask you to go and buy the tomatoes, you buy this one. Go to the woman wearing red and go and buy it. When I, uh, 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 that has me. That your boy or girl, Jesus died for him or her. That has made these circumstances that have caused her to come and live with you or stay with you. Aim at change. And when the person leaves, you have left the presence of God in your life. Okay? Aim at change. One thing that surprised me, because sometimes I've asked the wives of the pastors, the bishops, after fasting and prayer, why do you talk to a child about School grades. Talk to the child about performance, cleaning, bad friendships, respect, you name it. 
Can you tell me the reason why when you finish speaking? So okay, let's take it to the Lord. Then we'll go right anyway. Let's pray. And you did 14 days at the beginning of the year, 21 days. Can you explain to me why you didn't do it? They can't explain. You see, it's like those who follow the star and then they went to the king's house. Started in the spirit, ended in the flesh. In other words, we're not applying what we learn in church, at seminaries, conventions, fasting and prayer, special retreats. We don't apply them when we're in traffic. There's an elder who was telling me, serious elder, serious when they go to hell. Someone crossed him in traffic in the morning, he was going to work, he said, what's that? Bull, fool. Then he said, Lord, forgive me. I, I, I have insulted. I'm going too fast. Oh, oh. Then I'm uh, 10 minutes later, someone else crossed. He said, We are what? <laughs> you are an animal. He said, Lord, forgive me. So he said, Pray for me because the problem is inside. We are like tea bag. When you put us in hot water, the color comes out. Stop blaming the water. Because some of you are blaming circumstances, they are responsible for your challenges. Witches came into your life, they call themselves wives. Some are bad luck behind them. Yeah, we know the forces are there and all that. But if we do white cotton wool in hot water, do you see brown color? Let's work on ourselves. So your leadership of seeing and thinking and speaking for the family, speaking God's word in sense. When you see the wife has one, two, three, four, five, the child has good things, the idea is going to study whatever it is, you take that one error, two error, and you speak in a way. Sometimes I look at my wedding ring and I feel so sad I'm wearing it because you talk to me like a dog. And you don't even know you are challenged with impatience. You're not being like God. Isaiah 118, come let's reason together, says the law, the one in charge, the assistant. You will come discuss this with you. You know, Emma Tiench, oh, you're so good. By the way, you talk to me. Since I married her, this area, she shows say you have brought virginity into the marriage. She's lying down like a piece of wood. And I would always say, Dre, that's not how to do it. And the woman, too, you are touching that father, too. Put him say, hey, no, 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 stop it. I see my mosquito pass through the window to buy her. It's your husband. Let us patiently teach each other here and there. Teach each other here and there. Your leadership. Your leadership is not just influencing people as we define it. Leadership in the morals, the principles, the values, and especially letting them see how God leads and touches you and leaves you to do stuff as a leader. There's so much to say about that, but I don't want to draw the leadership, leadership. In Genesis 2, 24, do you know that all this is about life? You know how it started? Therefore, when you say therefore in the Bible, far, find out what it is there for. Therefore, what is it there for? A man shall leave, which means look at what was said before. I thought the woman was created by the side of the man. No, in Genesis 2, 22, the rib he took, he made it to a woman and brought her to. I said, oh, the translators, the translators did that. The whole Bible, all translations, God took the bone somewhere, one hour, two hours, three hours, I have no idea, and put special things there because he knew he was going to pass through the woman and did a makeup totally different. Because of pregnancy and baby and things, they're sensitive to so many little things here and there. So the uh, emotional pictures, talk to a girl, you're talking to the heart. Talk to a man, you're talking to the mind. Stop training your girls like your boys in your home and talking to the girls like boys in church. And the men, because of leadership, I think it's... It doesn't mean the women don't think, no. But the emotions come up. Now you tame the emotions of a woman with the word of God. The only way to change a woman which is challenging you, because the Bible, we are not serious with it. The source of our life, we are product of words. God created a spoke. And it says, wash her with the water of the word. Ephesians 5, take time. If you have never studied, I'm not saying just read. Ephesians 5, 21 to 33. That is why verse 32 says, marriage is a mystery. 
And you want to understand it? God is the one to explain to us. And in verse 23 to 27, wash her with the water of the word. One time in Kumasi, that's what I was saying on the radio everywhere. If you have washed and taken time with as a Bible person, not just simple devotion, discussion. Something my wife read about something yesterday. She was asking me now. Even when she called, she was asking. That's marriage. She had a man, uh, is it four or five thousand miles away? See, okay, and we were talking as to why something and whatever and all that. Is it in your marriage? You go out, you don't even call home. Born to your wife with the word of God. And you find out in the courtship, is he a word of God man? You see? So the problem is that the woman thinks we don't care because we don't feel what they feel. And the main thing, you are childish because <laughs> how to make the men feel more in addition to their thinking, how to make the women stop being so emotional and, blah, 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 and be thinking talkers. Thinking talkers. How to use scripture to control your anger, which is a problem. Sometimes it is there's a foundation for most of your problem, which is pride. And pride gives anger. James 1.20, my brother memorized it. The whole world, man, memorize it. I use it. It helps me. The anger of man doesn't work God's righteousness. The anger of man doesn't work God's righteousness. When you feel the anger, it happens to me in class. And I used to disgrace myself and say something. There was something I even said, talk to me like this. said, control your own class. I was telling them to be quiet. Hey, they, they will tell you, New York. I said, you can't talk to me like that. You didn't know why you can't talk to me like that. I felt bad. That they were quiet. They were shocked. But the way they regarded me, my Christianity, now it was time physiology. I was going around. And everybody's like this. Mm, so he's like this. And I said, I won't let you defeat me again. When they're annoying you or someone is coming late and you have been doing it, the anger of man doesn't work. God's righteousness. The anger of man doesn't work. God's righteousness. That is how to fight. That is what the Savior set as an example in Luke 4 and Matthew 4. Why are we not doing it? The divorces and the utterances are divorce you. Who are you? You think you deserve a woman? You deserve a man? A man like I 216, I hate divorce. like, I will kill you. Say something else. I'll divorce you. You think you are so beautiful. You are so knowledgeable. You are so anointed. Hey, you deserve nothing. You see, now, because of the differences in our leadership, when one is talking, how to translate your need into my language? Just a, a simple example. If a northerner maybe says, you will see, maybe it's going to bring more and arrow. <laughs> I don't know. But when maybe a guy man says, you will see, in the book of Bangu, you know, I the powers. When a man says, you don't respect me, you are not thinking in terms of a man's language, but they want, oh, I cook for you. Oh, I know this. Find out. In one of my books is um, 20 Major Signs of a, a Failing Marriage. I've listed 20 things. If you do one of them, the woman says, you don't have time for me. I don't feel loved. Look at five life group. We went to Hawaii. You will take it to Dubai. Your mother's three bedroom my bills. And so what? Men succeed a lot by achievements. Women succeed by relationships and connections. Until the woman feels you, feels connected to you, your mind and heart. And the more I know your mind, the more I trust you. That's why your wife doesn't trust you. That connection, you connect. You see? And that is a very important part of your leadership. In Genesis 24, a man shall leave. Men must move. All that you see around, from presidents to prophets to church, a man took a decision. A man moved. The sperm went to egg. Therefore, a man shall leave. Take a step of faith. From leadership, we come to fellowship. Genesis 2.18. Follows on one ship. You connect to God and connect to people, which is a challenge. You can't buy women with gifts and buy the children with gifts. So all that you are boasting of and you paid fees and paid your fees through Central University and Lagos and you went overseas and I built that one and half of my savings I used for the wedding and Valentine I gave you a car and everything and the woman doesn't feel connected to you but challenged. It's a huge challenge. 
Our parents didn't connect to us. So we have grown with the same thing. What you feed grows. And we are not connected to our partners, not connected to the children. When you die in the obituary, the life history, before I hear that, that is that school in Africa. A woman comes to say hello. I say, who is this? Daddy married a woman, no children one year, and came and married our mom. And I know it only at the funeral. That is bad. In my book on single, 17 things to look for in a girl and 32 to look for in a man for marriage. I've, I've listed 34 things to discuss in courtship. The last one is family history. Make time. You are challenged by the use of time, 24 hours. And you're not putting family first. Because Genesis chapters 1 to 3 came before Acts chapter 2 and came before Romans 13. The three institutions to run the world, home, marriage, family, Genesis 1 to 3. Church Acts chapter 2, Romans 13, 1 to 7. Government. And the three must work together, not separation of, of church and state. Therefore, work and commitment. Come, home, marriage, family first. Before Acts chapter 2, God wants you to connect to God and be responsible in your home before government and God are secular. Therefore, what comes under the three? And the three are supposed to run the world. <laughs> so fellowship with the person. Find ways and means of connecting all the time. I will never have up the phone in any conversation with my wife without a sentence of prayer. Nine out of ten, I will. Calling out of the blue when you get home. Make the time. You see, a leadership and fellowship go with commitment. And there are four types of commitment. Commitment to God of Ghana, God of the institution, God of ministry, God of a wife, God of in-law, God of the work you do, God of ministry, God. Number two, content, commitment to your duties. What are you expected to do in the life of people at the workplace? You are challenged because people are lazy and this and I come early. And people live early and I stay late, and this and this. Focus on yours. One time the whole world was wrong, only one man, Noah, was right. In Genesis 6 verse 8, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So you must, but then the matter is commitment to the institution. If it is marriage, whether you're a Muslim, Hindu, or whatever it is, have a baby, care for the child. If you're at water school, you all put on this uniform, you go to school at this time. If you're in a Milaboni or Premier College or Car Girls or Western Girls, it has nothing to do with Muslim Hindu. There's some things you have to do. School says this. Institution of a state. When you live in a city, when you are in a family, some things you have to do. They are right to do. And the last commitment is commitment to the person. When you don't bath and smell bad or put on a nasty T-shirt, I saw one this afternoon. You are invading my space with the junk I'm seeing. You see, when your mouth goes, hello, hmm, hmm. You are not thinking of me, the thing is smelling. And when you get sick, we all have to pay. You are not thinking. And that's why the sex things come in and they break virginities and do all kinds of things. Who oh, they break the marriage, but they open so many doors for the enemy and they don't confess because they we sin though. And so many things. These days is horrible. People are still married, they still do the journalism, pornography, and they want porn movies to, to have sex. Most of them are prostitutes and witches. They have to teach you, you bring that spirit to the bed. That's why a child will come out excellent. That's why he's great. I always F, F, D, 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 X, W, Z. The spirit with which you went to the marriage bed, God was not part of it. You see? You see? And most of you are married. Somebody says you're married for 30 years. Some even more than that. But just like God says, Amalekites, go back to them and do this. Go back to the foundations because the, the righteous can do nothing. Proverbs 11, verse 3. To be able to fellowship with God. Without fellowship, there's no God. It is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to fellowship before you can have God. And if one decides to go solo one day, they're in trouble. Fellowship started between an adult male and God. Men are leaders, therefore, fellowship. And therefore, relationships in the home, there are five. Father and mother, that's where parenting starts. That is the example you must set. Number two, father and the children. Don't reverse them. Number three, mother and the children, which is easier for her because of the child. 
And number four, the children and parents. Number five, among the children. Father, mother, first, beginning of parenting. Uh, recording is Father, children. Mother and children. Children and parents. And then among the children. If the children are not together, it starts with the parents. Because children watch what you do. So watch what you do. Children watch what you do. So watch what you do. So parenting is a challenge. The children don't know daddy the data. You have to give the first impression about God the Father to the children. And even to your wife. You have married a woman, you are having children like everybody does. You are eating and vacation and doing this. Everybody is doing it. What is the purpose? What is the will of God for your life as a man, Adam? And a woman was brought to you to be the helper, to fulfill the will of God. If you don't know, you have to help him as you pray and as you pray to get a vision which is the central driving force of a person's life. And then God will direct you. So you teach the children what to do. Don't be like anybody else. There was a man who called me sometime and he said, there's a problem and I want to divorce. And I said, why? A big man in church. From day one, we had a wedding. The mother has followed the girl to the house until today. And when I talked to my wife to talk to her that the other brothers and sisters are married, they should go there too, he doesn't listen. So I asked him, where is the husband of the woman? Dead. Because the woman was a widow? Yes. All the rest had married, right? Yes. And the woman had the last one whom you are going to marry with her. Marry her, she said, yes. I said, my brother, you're a Christian. Let's use some sanctified common sense here. Let's go to God because love your wife as Christ loved the church. Christ died for the church. You can't die for a woman you can't marry. Woman, make yourself worthy of being died for. Ephesians 5, read 22 all the way to 27. Die. That verse must be emphasized. So I said, you know what? You, it's like mushroom you didn't water or fertilize. You want them to find the bush, then you bring it to market, selling it at exorbitant price. What did you do to the woman? Find in church is a sister who sings, she's that there. The one sister is graduated, and this and that and that, and then I found a wife. You didn't think of the woman who is a widow now, alone, and the only chair she's sitting on, you go and remove the chair, and then her bottle goes boom on the floor. What do you want her to do? Did you plan anything? Did you think that in marriage you bring two families together? That is your challenge. My wife, my wife, my wife. Then they die and leave the children miserable because he didn't even let the wife connect with the parents. My wife, my wife, hey, don't come near my wife. And then they die and they give problems. People don't mind the children because their husband, the daddy, was selfish and controlling and unloving. Be careful. That should, no one should interfere. Your kids shouldn't even come between you and your wife. But balance it. Balance it. I said, if I were you, when the woman came, I said, oh, hello, and they tell everything. And then from time to time, you take the woman and your wife, and then you visit the other children around who are married. So they will say, hey, mommy, come here too. You are here. You didn't do well. Have you ever taken your wife to visit any of the other siblings and their spouses? She said, no. I said, my brother, if you're a church leader, one of the leaders of a church, and your character is like this, it's affecting the anointing of the church. Is God happy? Then he was quiet. And I blame the counselor who counseled him. You see, what did you marry for? You see, what did you marry for? You fall in love with the personality, but the character you didn't think about, and you didn't think about the rest of the family members who should be together. You see, stop achieving. If I'll talk more about the next thing about still worship is another one. Because when the man was Reverend, Reverend Doctor. One minute more. It's actually over 10, uh, 10 minutes now. So we can do one minute. Oh, okay. And go so to I'm, I'm rounding up. Yes. Yeah. Then you ask the questions. Still worship is what God gave the man. Still worship. So the woman goes there to help to take care of this. In First Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. First Corinthians 4. We are servants first. Then we take care of things. Don't just jump. I'm taking care of this. I'm in charge of this. You serve like Jesus says you serve. Still worship is the other ship. And then discipleship. How to get people to understand you and things. And then comes the mentorship. 
for you take people under your wings. And the good things you have learned, you're going to teach them, starting from your home and your children and, and, and other things. Let's pray, short prayer. Say a short prayer about what you have heard so far. We'll continue next week. I hope you are praying. I Father, we want to thank you for what you have heard. There's a word in season. When you strike a chord and the music comes out and we have to respond. The best way to stop good intentions from dying is to quickly execute them. Maybe I never have an action plan. We are not on this Zoom by accident including others who have joined us even overseas, including some bishops and apostles and the rest all over the world have sent this to. May we check ourselves. The unexamined life is not worth living by David and what we represent by Buzia, but somehow there's a scripture back to check ourselves. Self is the greatest enemy. We have seen self, Satan, and the world as our enemy. Sin, self, Satan, the world. But the greatest enemy is self. So right now, when the foundations are destroyed in Psalm 11, verse 10, the righteous can do nothing. So let us go back to our foundations tonight. Why we married each other? Our understanding of marriage is bringing two temples together. What kind of mutuality? Because a lot of the challenges is because the men are running solo, misunderstanding of the idea of leadership and head. Without recognizing brains to think, eyes to see, and ears to hear, and nose to smell trouble. And the woman is the neck of the home holding the head. Where the neck goes, the head goes. And their tongue and temper, the only way to change them, wash her with the water of the word. To stand on their feet and make sure we are into the world. Not just simple devotions, but steady and understanding of the word and applying the word to overcome envy, jealousy, anger, resentment, bitterness, suspicion, mistrust, and sharing our hearts and our mind. But the more I know your mind, the more I can trust you. Your communication is the life of the relationship. Lord, help us to go and practice. When we feed it, it will grow. When we starve it, it will die. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Questions? Amen, amen, amen. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend Professor, uh, for those edifying uh, words and uh, and uh, wisdom. We are we are grateful. We are grateful. So um, uh, it's either you raise your hand uh, uh, in the chat. I mean, uh, no, you raise your hand by using the emoji, uh, or you put your questions in the chat uh, for Doctor. Uh, to answer. So you can actually raise your hand by using the emoji uh, and then or put your questions in the chat and then we'll pick it up to answer. I think I see two questions or one question in the chat. He said, a friend asked me uh, this question that he slept or had sex with another woman and he feels guilty and wanted to tell uh, the wife is asking me whether he should tell the wife, whether he should tell the wife, please, what do you say? Uh, that's a question from Reverend Dr. Chris Quay. Reverend Dr. Chris Quay. And, and again, uh, we, have we have married for 30 uh, years, but something makes me feel uncomfortable from my wife, who always sees revelation and disturb me to interpret. Uh, interpret it for her. She is a prophetess. I wonder that. I wonder that does God speak every day when we sleep? Does God speak every day when we sleep? Yeah. First of all, yes. So there uh, are two questions in the in the chat for uh, maybe you can just touch on it before we pick the rest. Yeah, uh, it's God who forgives sins, not humans. So we should be careful of cheap forgiveness. Telling your wife and your wife saying, oh, it's okay, I understand, you are weak, I forgive you. Doesn't clear you before God. 
I'm sure you have gone before God when you sin as a child of God and then ask God to forgive you. Sort it out. In the process, you will know whether to tell your wife or not. The timing is important. When you're talking to someone, you're talking to every spirit present. Remember that. Ensure that how you say it and when you say it is very important. Depending on the maturity of the woman and God's direction, so it doesn't get wounded by it, by the way you put it. Or doubt whether you have said all, so you know who your wife is. But under normal circumstances, a serious thing like that, your wife must know. But let God guide you. Advisor is not a decision maker. You see? And the idea of revelations and things, God doesn't work outside you. He's working inside you. In Hebrews 1, 1 to 3, in the past he spoke through prophets. Yes, prophecy is still a gift. But now he has spoken through Jesus to all of us. So learn to hear God yourself. Now, no prophecy is perfect, God has said. So we have our imperfections of seeing too much. And if at the time, everything you see, you want to see. Everything you see, the devil can tell you things. And some can be imaginations. One of the things was now also taught us to be careful how you handle gifts. If you're the type, everything, raise your hand. I saw this. I saw this. You see, you are limiting your gifts. God won't reveal a number of things to you because you, keep, you don't know how to keep secrets. And number two, the devil will say, oh, if you are like that, I'll show you stuff. So it's a case by case examination. I need to talk to him to find out. Is it every night that she's doing that? Sometimes it's a challenge for you to also step up your spirituality to understand. But the woman must have self-control. You know, women are emotion. So self-control could be a problem. And if no one checks you, go on thinking you're spiritual by saying everything you see. Then the devil will even show you things not from God. You see, you're not supposed to every night you see things, every night you see things, every night. And God says, say them, say them. Do you realize that in Galatians chapter, chapter 5, 22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit is love, which is obedience. Love, you have joy, peace. Do you notice the last thing is self-control? Self-control is what you use to manage gifts and fruits and talents. Given by the Holy Spirit. Do you notice that? Self-control is what is used. That is what brought the original sin. If you don't control yourself, you can't even manage love. You foolishly love. You foolishly think there's joy, and then after the party, we are broke. You foolishly do things. You go to a meeting thinking you are humble by being quiet. When you are supposed to speak. Because dishonesty is not just telling lies. If you keep quiet and carry wrong impressions to your spouse, to people, you are dishonest. So God must guide. But I wish I could see them because I need to hear what revelations and things. And, uh, it's too general. But of the same with sin. Not only sex, but sometimes money and things. Um... But know when to say it, very important. And the maturity of the person. Okay. Um, okay. I just can add. Okay, okay, okay. All right, thank you very much, uh, uh, Doc. Uh, so the floor is open. You can actually ask a question for someone and not for yourself. Uh, yeah, so uh, like someone just did. Uh, so we're taking uh, questions or comments like Doctor has said or addition. Uh, to some of the things that have been shared this evening uh, for all of us. Please ask him. There's no question you asked I haven't heard before. One of the challenges we have is... Okay, Pastor, one, there's a, a hand up. There's a hand up. Yes, Pastor Ciso, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello, Prof. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Yes. yes. Um, sir, I, I didn't quite get your analysis of the the husband who seems to have a challenge with the mother-in-law. Um, it, it made me struggle a bit with your conclusion because it looked like um, you seem to, <laughs> from from the way you spoke, uh, you didn't seem to support him in any way. But my, I, I didn't quite get the um, the analogy or probably the issue. You, but if, see, if that, what, it is a bigger challenge. You know, number of our challenges, they are bigger than they are. You know, most of what you're afraid of never really happens. So it is such a huge problem that you're thinking of divorce. This is not someone saying, I have a problem there, I'm trying to solve it. Thinking of divorcing the woman because he's telling the wife, talk to your mother to go to your other brothers and sisters to, to, to stay there a little bit too. And the wife 
is not able to tell the mother. So you are divorcing her? My brother, do you understand now? I won't support him for this. I, I guess that is enough to leave your wife whom you vow to. What has been your leadership in the Bible and prayer and the plan for the family and understanding? Here's a widow who has a last born. You went and married. So she followed you. You don't know where to go. Help her. You see, the home in which you want to marry is a mission field. And your wife is the closest Christian sister, while the husband is the closest Christian brother. So I'm not saying I don't support him at all. It's, it's disturbing. I mean, to have from day one, if you even want to sit in the living room, do some kissing, do this, hey, mother is here. Wherever you are going, how do you always leave her? She has to go with you here. Hey, I know. It's not something I support at all. Then she lived there day by day because she didn't have a plan. No. But I'm talking of the foundation he didn't start well. And the thought he didn't have, and he thought, my wife. Without realizing, somebody trained the wife. Her welfare. And saying, tell her to go to the other brothers and sisters who are married to go and stay there too. That is not very responsible Christianity. Will Jesus do that? Provision for them. That is why we see where God sent you. It's like those of us who can have joint account. Because, hey, it's a financial wreck. When you go to heaven, so if Sister Josephine has married this man, if Sister De Debbie, Sister Lizzie or Vic, or Brother Joe, or Brother Edward, or Brother Fred has married this woman, you pray as God, gradually work out. He said, do you see how he did this? And he wasn't even telling the truth about me. That's why I gave him to you, God will tell you. In the area you think is a challenge for you, and there are women here, here. God is using to train you. And let me tell you, if God wants to use you, and there's one thing in your life he has been telling you, and you won't stop, like a woman who came and talk, 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 talk. I said, What does your husband complain about? He says, I talk too much. That talk too much is the window through which he sees everything. If God wants to use you and wants to change something in your life, and you will not change and listen to God, you think mine is just one or two, and you don't even take it serious. That is the reason why God will delay in changing your husband or wife or changing. You the man. You don't make time. You don't show love. You don't show endurance. You don't show affection. You don't make time for housework, which is one of the things my wife and I were talking about. Why is that men they ask you, you stay there, fold this, do this, simple things, making bed. You see, when in June 99, I said, if I'm the last to wake up on the bed, I'll make the bed. It has become a habit. Even when I get up, I'm done here and I go to Joy FM, I can't live without making sure I'm straightening the bed a little bit. Even when I go to my wife to the hotels, people are coming. I can't leave and go and preach in the place, but I'll put things there. I practice the desire until it becomes a delight. As some of us are old, you married 25, 30, 40, 50. Has the marriage changed you? How God uses marriage to change character? And how he uses the weakness of the partner whose mother is still staying in the house to shape you. You don't use a smooth edge for a rough edge. You use another rough edge. Kukuru, 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 become smooth. But everything here hey, is a challenge. It's a challenge. So run away from God's discipline. Make sure. And you are talking of divorce. Do you know what divorce is? That is enough to divorce your wife. As someone who is a lady, if I mention this person, you'll be surprised. Who, who, who explained marriage to you before you married? That alone is divorce. You bossing the woman. I was expecting him to say, well, you and the wife, you pray about it. Let God speak. Let's even take one, put breakfast away, and be praying. What do we do? How do we, 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 we? It's the same way we solve problems. I've told you, but I don't like. In problem solving, you use we and us. You know, we are not at peace. And if we did this, you, I, no, you, I, you, I, you, I. The child of pride and lack of wisdom. You see? So, um, I, I don't want to keep talking. The confusion more confounded. So this is why I'm not disagreeing with him, but it's the way he's solving it. I'm talking of divorce. Look, before you're married, make up your mind, I'm not going to divorce. Teach all the young people. And help at home. You see, women never get enough of domestic help. The same way we don't get enough of their father too, in the front there and the behind and the headquarters and all that. You know what attracts women? Quality. The way you treat your words. The first thing a man gave a woman was words from the lips. Bone of my bone. Who told you you were sleeping? When you are in tune with God, you know where he's moving. First thing 
man. A man who can confess, he will share a joke, he will share a joke, he will laugh. Sense of humor is good. He's more good. And when we are going on retirement and things is worse, I have, you know, getting to an age where, if you're not careful, that's why my wife made us discuss it. Structure the last year, the book I wrote, 24 things you can do to maintain and strengthen your marriage. You see, a woman will never be happy if her emotions are not happy and you are not connected. No woman. So women, watch yourself too. You see, no woman. But the men talk of achievements. You see, rich conversation and affection is the soil in which they grow. You see. And the woman, you want to have their children, they just relax. Every woman found out what attracted the man. If you want Coca-Cola shape bottle, and then you want guitar shape, you eat, they become watermelon or coconut. Then there's a problem. Some two go on gym and diet and become skeleton walking around the house. Find out what you want, want. work together. Discuss things. My brother, sit down. So Saturday morning, don't go to the prayer meeting. When you die, prayer meeting will go on. And spend some time, if it was in three months, from 5 a.m. to about 8, no phone calls, nothing. Talk about issues. Listen to each other. Listen to each other. And you are not doing it. All this is about money and this and this. One started having joint account. I was the problem. I give gifts foolishly. My wife sat me down and said, hey, your kids are going to go to school. I brought the public hockey and USD principles into marriage. And you're using family finances. My secret. You see me when I was coming to Ghana, 2000, 2001 and things. I was using American Express. I got $7,000 debt. American Express said, bring it. It was during the 9-11, and I used it as a bargaining chip. Hey, this is my 9-11. The one was so sad. And what I was giving was taking $500 out of my account every month when they pay me. That is not good in ministry because scripture, I know, they didn't teach me how to raise funds. Your reward is in heaven. I didn't know how to raise funds. Even after now, I'm still weak there. And I was using finances. If I tell you the amount of home bill I paid from June 99 when I came on your to June 2000, you'll be shocked. I was taking collect calls. If you say yes, collect calls, $10 before you talk. My problem was I brought KNUST habits and attitude. And I'm telling all of us listening tonight, maybe it's the last thing I'll say. The problem is we are still single in many, many, many areas. It's like people who are never happy because things are not running their, their former church. You will never enjoy your position in that church. You see? The way we correct people, the way we make love, the way we are so unromantic and ching -ching, coming home like this, and hurricane get behind him, kick your dog, your dog, and kiss your cat. They are brought it into marriage. So women have brought the culture, the culture, the culture. They said, one well, woman who said, do you know that eight years of my marriage, anytime I had sex, I thought I was sinning. I said, did you tell your husband? She said, and they divorced. She said, divorced because it will lead to other things. You brought virginity, virginity into the marriage, and the counselor should have helped. Ask questions and help her how to behave as a virgin in the marriage. The counselor didn't do it. And some men have brought your wife is not a harlot. And then they brought all kinds of those who don't need the Viagra and the, all these Chinese sex enhancing drugs, and they are taking them. And some men you have to beg them to make love with them. Many of the women they can't they don't take initiative anymore. Men have sex on their terms. They don't see it as a very important thing. They never mention the woman's name. They don't say, oh, it's wonderful. When she's tired and gives it to you, their mouths are closed as if that is the, they are not spiritual. What is spiritual about it? When you are making love and having the children, that's why you like it. You do take Jesus out. And it's too big to open the mouth and not buy any part of the woman. And the woman too is like that. You hug her and she's going backwards. You kiss her and you make some money. You sort of open the mouth. Eh? And these are the challenges. Domestic duties, housework, men, men, make time for the house. And when the woman, my wife was telling me, sometimes I do it. We are too busy counseling, writing books, doing this. And, and she, she, she does the laundry. I do the folding and this. And you keep doing this. I had to learn when she was working to iron the thing. There's a place you hang something that had to be ironed. Then I go and say, oh, uh, she, I know that she goes and she puts on the kettle and waits. So I will iron as soon as it wakes up, I will iron because I was working at night. And I will make sure the kettle is boiling. So when she won't waste that three minutes, I added warm in the car because I had to warm the car for about three minutes before moving. So warming the car took away about three minutes. 
the kettle on, ironing, watch your wife. Let the Holy Ghost that makes you come to Ghana to minister on radio and places talk to you to do these things for your wife. That is our challenge. Be domestic. The woman was brought to the man in the home. God didn't stay five minutes. Expecting Adam to teach the wife. And people, I believe it. Those who say Adam didn't teach her to teach if what it really meant not to eat the fruit. And we are still the same. Okay. Okay, uh, Doug. <laughs> uh, so that, uh, thankfully, we have next week, uh, uh, Monday. Uh, so I guess we can uh, adjourn. Our time is now uh, seven thirty-two, and so I, I think, Doug, we can uh, end it here and then take uh, uh, the, the 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 last part. Uh, God willing, next week Monday, same time, six o'clock. All right. I mean, so. Uh, maybe the first question for me I'll ask before you proceed is maybe if I want to summarize everything that has been said, uh, what is the most uh, premium battle that men face? Maybe next week you will start with that for, for us uh, as we we, we, we we learn more to end up. But thank you. I I will not uh, talk before SP talks. So uh, uh, SP, Maybe uh, you give oh, your oh, remarks. That's, we'll that's one announcement. Yes, please. I, I have a new book I'm launching on Sunday. So maybe I'll send the link to you and put there. Yes, because please. you can only get on Facebook when I have. It's a new book on how to help people to change. OK, sir. And the launching is at 7.30 PM. Okay, virtual. Right. OK, virtual. I'll be quiet. OK, OK, that's fine. Just All right. Pastor Fred, your closing remarks yes. before. We thank Dr. Kishidu for sharing these things with us. Uh, he, he, he is loaded, and sometimes when he talks very fast, he is some of us who have heard him, but he was able to. I wonder. Let's stand down, slow down. Yeah. <laughs> so we will have to. Ask him to slow down. If there's a scene we can share, uh, some people also like hearing and also screaming. But on the whole, most of the things that he has said, he also repeated them. And when they are in God's image, they have responsibility, they have servanthood, they have all these things. But sometimes the big man is in that we want to show, the pride that we want to show, we don't want to give our wives. At their point of need, they must meet our freedom with them, bringing our culture and tradition, and not with the culture and values. Sometimes the women themselves do not also follow biblical values and tradition. So it brings a lot of challenges to the marriage. It's a classroom, it's a learning, and uh, I like what you said. What you have said, put it into practice. Immediately and see whether that seed that has been sown will not yield fruit. That causes you to spend it one and one and a half hours to listen and pray about it. And there will not be any difference, a positive difference in your body. Thank you for sharing this chapter with us. We believe that we can gather again next week with questions and answers from above all. Not only the listeners and doers. Of the word of God. Thank you, Paul. Mr. Felix, over to you now. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, and a big thank you to all of you and uh, those who joined from the diaspora and the uh, Reverend Ministers uh, I, uh, on the call. Uh, wants to say God bless all of you. Uh, most important, the link will be the same for next week. So do share the link and do invite uh, someone uh, to be part of. Uh, uh, what uh, we are doing. Uh, next week will be the last uh, series. And uh, so we trust that you uh, come on time and we can learn together. Thank you very much. SP, you, you can, we are free to receive your closing prayer. Our Heavenly Father and our God, we thank you that you are a good God. You commanded us when we were leaving, not just to make disciples, but teaching them to observe all that you have commanded us. Thank you for your servant. 
we use today to really teach us these things, to answer our questions, our deep needs, some of the hurts we are carrying, some of the failures that are haunting us. May the light that is shed for this bring out the darkness. May we dwell in the light of your word and yield ourselves to you that we will truly be the people you made us to be. Enjoying our homes and our marriages, having a better country and a better nation of the glory of your day. Thank you for hearing us and causing us to be a difference in quality in the service we have done to our homes. And to you, to pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Shall we Amen. Pause this? Surely, surely, goodness and mercy Amen. shall follow us all the yes. days of all our lives. Days of our lives. lives. And we shall be in, in the house, house of the Lord. Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.